Hey guys, welcome to the video. Uh, so I had a very special gift given to me yesterday from my old team at Mountain Warehouse. Uh, they decided to jump on a website called Cameo and book a video message from none other than John Noble himself. Now in case you're not too sure who John Noble is, he was in Fringe and of course played Denethor in The Lord of the Rings. So I thought I'd do a bit of a reaction video uh, and show you guys the message that I've received from Mr. Noble himself. G'day Axel, John Noble here, how are you? There's a group of people from the Mountain Warehouse Wellington group, team from there. And uh, they like you and they sort of to send you a message. Uh, they told me that you were the assistant manager, but you'd left for a new job. Which was correct. Yes, I was assistant store manager at Mountain Warehouse, uh, and I left to work somewhere a bit closer to home. And uh, I hope it was a, a, you know, prosperous change for you, my friend. They also told me that you're obsessed with the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Obsessed, yes. Well, I mean, you can see behind me right now with all my figures and stuff. As you may or may not know, I've been following the films and uh, pretty much anything about the films for we, 22 years now. Yeah. And uh, it's, it was funny when I, I read that and then I thought, hmm, Wellington, yes. Mountain well, Warehouse, Wellington team. Well, Wellington's the home base for making of Lord of the Rings. And yes it was, so we've got Weta Workshop and uh, Weta Digital and everything here, got the giant green screen at Stone Street Studios and of course Peter Jackson's uh, post-production plays, Park Road Post. So I'm not sure whether you're a group of Kiwis or not, or just a coincidence, but... Uh, Definitely a group of Kiwis, mate. It's pretty special, the way that, uh, the way that we were embraced uh, by by the New Zealanders was quite remarkable. It's a small place, and uh... it's fair to say. So most people in New Zealand are polite, um, and you know we we don't bombard uh, celebrities as such. Uh, yeah, and yeah, we are a small place. Uh, population's not the massive, uh, five mil, I think, or something like that. Last I checked. Uh, but yeah, New Zealand's a small place, and yeah, we we embrace. Uh, the the arts here, and we don't tend to, like I said, bombard celebrities. Very proud people, but they took this on board, and uh, they made it their own. It was theirs; it still is theirs. And everyone wanted to join in. You know, an anecdote: there was there was a charge, we, and and so they put the call out for writers and authors to come in uh, to help with this charge. Uh, fun fact, a lot of the writers, or some of the writers in Lord of the Rings are females. Uh, but like the Nazgul, you can't tell because all you're seeing is a hooded figure. You're not seeing their faces or anything. Uh, and some of those were female writers. And people came from all over the two islands to get there. Uh, with their horses and uh, the, the fellow that was in charge of trying to make it, uh, or did make it work, um, he told me they were totally undisciplined. He said, I couldn't discipline them. They'll just go. And up they went. And, uh, but they, they certainly, uh, gee, they loved it. I'll never forget, we did the uh, ride down the main street of Wellington, main road. So that would have been um, Q, no, Manor Street. So Manor Street. So that was when they did the Return of the King premiere. Um, and they were heading up to the embassy and they started at Parliament. But Noble's going to tell the story. From Parliament House all the way along and all the way down to the theatre and there were just crowds along each side. We were in the back of cars, you know, in the uh, convertibles. And they were all there. They loved it. And do you know something? When I saw that, I thought about Wellington. And I thought, you know, Axel, I was 25 years younger when I played Denethor. <laughs> I was... 10.50 then, and I'm about to turn 75 in a couple of weeks. So there you go. 25 years. Makes me feel old. <laughs> I mean, 
Noble's turning 75. I've just turned 36. So that's... It's crazy how time flies. It's remarkable, isn't it? 25 years. Oh, dear. Anyway, my friend, you, uh, you, you love it. And I can understand why, why, why a man would love, uh, would love that show. Uh, its popularity hasn't dimmed at all, you know. Whenever they put it on television, which they do all the time, usually The Return of the King, it's always got the ratings or it wouldn't be there. People still watch it. That's very true. Lord of the Rings has still got a massive following. Um, I know I've got a few really good friends in and out in New Zealand that are a huge fan still and will watch the films and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's much like, I suppose, Harry Potter and Star Wars. It's, um, it, its popularity, as Noble said, is, hasn't dimmed. It, it's still there. And there's generations today that weren't around when the films got released that are getting into it. Uh, it's going to be one of those things that's going to go on for, for a lifetime, I reckon. And when I go to fan conferences, uh, the two shows for me that people talk about are Lord of the Rings and Fringe, mainly. A few other bits and pieces, but they're the two main ones. Those are the two standouts for the, uh, for the fans, anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, Wellington. I actually had to go back there in, was it, 220... Now that sounds strange because that was during the pandemic, wasn't it? Because we'd started to shoot something over there and, uh, uh, oh yeah, Cowboy Bebop. And anyway, uh, I finished the bit I was doing and raced back to uh, North America and went up and did The Boys and something else. Fantastic show, The Boys. Highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it, do so. And, uh, but then they couldn't go ahead because John Cho had, uh, had smashed his leg in an accident and took seven months off to recuperate. But finally they said, and then came COVID, they said, we've got to get this done. They'd come to a, a deal with the New Zealand government that we could come in, some of us, a few of us, under certain circumstances. And uh, so we did, <laughs> sneaking around in these, uh, well, leaving uh, leaving America there. All of the airports were abandoned and so forth. We arrived in Wellington freezing first thing in the morning and we were lined up off the, uh, coming off the jet. We were, we didn't go to the terminal, we were taken down and lined up uh, by uh, soldiers and policemen and they marched us off to this holding area. And of course it was evident that what we were doing was dealing with the COVID COVID outbreak, and we were going to go, didn't know this beforehand, by the way, we were going to go into isolation, quarantine. Yeah, so around COVID times, people were welcome to come to New Zealand um, under, like Noble said, special circumstances. Um, but the mandatory part was you had to spend two weeks in isolation. No matter who you are, we, we didn't care. It was two weeks, isolation. Make sure you're not spreading. Make sure you're all good. Then you can get into what we're organized for you to come and do um so yeah that was mandatory and the norm uh back when COVID was massive i mean it's still massive today but not as massive back then if that makes sense like we've learned to deal deal with it now whereas back then it was all new to us and we had to do particular things to make sure that things didn't happen it was it was a whole learning curve uh, two weeks which we did and it was in Wellington, and it really, I mean, the people were fantastic, but it was not a nice place. It was like a prison cell, two weeks. But, uh, and I used to think I could hear the, the wails of the, uh, of the people of Minas Tirith out there, because the wind, that's called Windy Wellington sometimes, it just whistles through there. We are the windiest city in the world, windier than Chicago. There you go. So many things, but it uh, was a grand experience. So many stories already have been told, and doubtless in time more will be told. I think, although uh, none of us are getting that much younger anymore, even the youngsters. Isn't that weird to think of uh, those young boys being middle-aged men now? Well, such is life. All right, mate. Well, listen. Good luck to you on your uh, in your new job. And, and I also have to tell you something. 
I have to tell you that Sam Wise says hi and he loves you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, there's a good Sam Wise was a very impressive. Uh, I thought Sean did an amazing job in that. Mm. I thought he should have got a, a, an award actually. All right, mate, all the best to you and uh, good luck with everything. Keep in touch with those lovely people from the Wellington team. They like you. See you later, mate. Bye. That was pretty damn cool. Um, so I was hoping to meet John Noble next weekend at Wellington Armageddon Expo, but I think due to filming uh, conflict, he's not appearing, or for whatever reason, he's sadly not turning up. Um, so I was hoping to meet up, meet him, get a photo, get an autograph, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, and then this happened. That was pretty cool. Um, one of the coolest things that I've ever had experienced with Lord of the Rings fandom for me. Um, so massive thank you to the Mountain Warehouse team. It was much appreciated. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It's a little video from John Noble himself, which was pretty damn cool. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.